Spanish teacher here sort of around been here for the last nine years. My name is Amy Maeza. Okay. I'm a teacher. I teach U.S. history in Abbott. Uh, Coach Gross. I'm Jamie Castro. I teach math. Um, my name is Alex Lucero. Well, I went to school here. A uh, brief history about myself. Moved out here to Arizona back in 1997. Uh, coming from California. When I moved here, I uh, began going to Trevor Brown, and I graduated from Trevor Brown in 2000. Yes, I was born and raised in Phoenix. I actually grew up right across the street. I um, was born um, in Phoenix, like I said, and I lived here until I graduated, and then I moved to California for about um, almost a year and then moved back. Uh, Coach Gross, I graduated from Trevor Brown in 1996. Uh, I was a football player two years on the varsity. I was also a four-year varsity track athlete here at Trevor Brown. Um, I graduated from Trevor Brown. I lived in the area for quite a bit of time. I live in Avondale now, which is not too far away. So um, kind of been here my whole life. I attended Trevor Brown from 1997 to 2000. Um, I came back and started working at Trevor Brown again as a student assistant in 2004, and I started teaching here in 2006 in the social studies department. Graduated from here, both my sisters actually went to school here too, and uh, at the time, it was, uh, it was in the 70s, and uh, there were a lot of differences. Uh, there's uh, several other people on campus that work here that graduated from here, but uh, I am the oldest, I believe, as far as, as far as I know. Nobody else really went to school here in the 70s and graduated in 1980. Um, Tora Brown has changed. Uh, well, the quantity of, of students attending the school has changed. The, uh, it's, it's up. Uh, significantly. Um, also, the student participation has changed a lot. Uh, there's not too much participation. The majority of the participation comes amongst you know the same students. It seems like every year. I actually think it's um, more peaceful now than it was back then. Um, I attended Trevor Brown between '94 and '98, and um, I don't know. It just seems like things are less tense now. So oh, okay. I think it's improved. Uh, some new buildings, uh, a lot more kids. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. When I was in high school, most people were white. Um, just a few Hispanics people. It's, it's changed quite a bit. Um, it was a lot of farmland still, a lot of rural areas. Um, the mall is still there, so that's always been. But um, it, it's changed quite a bit. It was a little bit more diverse when I was a Trevor Brown student as far as the population. Um, now it's a, like 90% Hispanic. Um, back then it was probably like 60% Hispanic. Um, students, I guess school spirit tends to have, seems to simmer down a little bit. So I know that's one of the bigger things. Um, just not as much community from when I went to school, it seems like. Well, some of the differences, you know, I point out to the kids, one of the uh, funny thing is uh, between the cafeteria and the library, there were uh, lockers. Everybody had a locker. And one of the funny things was, is they were, there were three lockers. There was a top one, a middle one, and a bottom one. And nobody wanted the bottom one because you had to, you know, scrunch down on the ground to get your stuff. And nobody really wanted the top one because it was pretty high up. So everybody wanted a middle one. And we never could figure out what the trick was to get a middle locker. You know how there's always a trick to something, but uh, it was it was just random. So when you got your uh, locker distributed to you, you just always hoped you had a middle locker. Other than that, uh, the mall was uh, was just being built. So most of the things around here were uh, were just fields. It was a field between here and Circle K. That was it. There was no wall up over there or anything. It was just trees, uh, so you could easily just walk back and forth. And uh, it was an open campus. We used to go home for lunch and everything. I lived just right across the street over on Thomas, or just off of Thomas. And uh, we used to go home for lunch and all kinds of stuff, and then just uh, just come back. So, uh, you know, those are a few of the differences I've seen. Some of the things I looked up the most in high school were my coaches. Um, Simply because I had lots of interaction with them 
and I was around them, like I said, I was around them the most, and they were the ones that influenced me the most in some of my, uh, some of my decisions that I made in school and in life. Teachers that were my favorite. One was um, my U.S. history teacher. His name is Mr. Bonet Castillo, and um, he really inspired me to study history. That's what, really before that, I never had too much interest in history until the way he taught it really sparked my attention. Okay. Um, the second one is Miss White, and she was my senior year marketing teacher, um, and I really liked her because she she really treated us like adults. And I really always appreciated that. My head football coach, uh, Bill Mitten, and then my history teacher, Ann Bruce. I really liked Mr. Reynoso, and he's actually still in our district. He's an administrator now at um, Metro Tech High School. But um, most of my education prior to Mr. Reynoso, the, the teachers had students in seats, and it was just the teacher talking and us taking notes and maybe sometimes asking questions. And Mr. Reynoso, way back then, had us in groups already talking to each other, giving us problems to work out. and. That was really different. I thought it was pretty cool. I had a couple of them. Um, one of them is actually one of my social studies teacher was Miss Bruce. Um, she was actually my U.S. history teacher, and um, I looked up to her because of the passion that she kind of had for U.S. history and the passion that she had for her students. So I I appreciated that. Oh yeah, uh, Mr. Ashley. Mr. Ashley actually had a lot to do with me being a teacher. I remember uh, the coolest thing that he did was Mr. Ashley was a uh, American history teacher. So one day we went to class and a little while later after class started, uh, Mr. Ashley was uh, uh, pushing in the television. This is back when they had the television on the cards. I mean, I don't know, we're gonna see a video today. And he looked at us and he said, you know, he said, this is American history. And today we're going to watch History in the Making. And he turned on the World Series. And, and when, this is when the World Series was on during the day. Uh, so we watched the World Series and I thought, man, this is cool. Teachers are like regular people. They watch baseball, they go to movies, they go out to dinner, whatever. They're just regular people. It'd, it'd probably be pretty cool to be a teacher. Uh, so uh, that, you know, a lot of people would say uh, today that uh, would wonder if the kids were probably really getting an education watching the World Series. But it, uh, it had an impact on me. It let, let me realize that teachers are just people too. And they like stuff just like everybody. I wanted to become a, a teacher at Charles Brown was just being being a product of the environment um, and also just having, you know, like I said, some of my coaches were teachers and, and having them give me good advice. It made me want to to do the same, to go to college, become a teacher, come back and, and, and give back to kids that were in my situation. Um, I always knew that eventually I wanted to come back. Um, like, this is my community. I still feel a part of it. So I just felt the need then and the purpose to come back and teach? Uh, honestly, I just really enjoyed uh, working with kids as I kind of got older. Uh, playing in college, playing football in college, uh, I kind of knew I wanted to get in coaching and I just really enjoyed working with kids, so I thought teaching would be the best outlet for me to do that. Actually, I became a teacher at Trevor Brown because I wanted to coach and <laughs> help out with student council. It wasn't about the math in the beginning, it was kind of about hanging out with kids still. Um, and that's what really encouraged me, is I, I wanted to make a difference in them in some clubs and different activities. My mom's actually a teacher. She taught for 29 years in Chandler. Um, I don't know, just something about Trevor Brown that I love. Um, the community that was established when I was here. Just my father was a business owner in the area, so I was always around. I kind of was brought up on Trevor Brown, so I just have pride in it. So that's the reason why. Primarily why I came back, wanted to give back to the community that raised me, basically. I would say I've, I've always liked working with kids. When I was in high school, I used to work with little kids. I coached little kids basketball and everything. Then when I got older, like in my 20s, I started working with like junior high age kids. And I worked at the Boys and Girls Club and I coached uh, uh, junior high age basketball. Then as I got older, on up into my 30s and 40s, and we don't even talk about how much beyond that I am now, <laughs> but I started coaching and teaching high school age kids. So I've always, I've always worked with uh, kids or uh, students in some way. Uh, so that was uh, probably my motivation is I, I always knew I wanted to, to work with kids. 
all of my teachers, what they passed me, what they passed down to me when I was coming here. Um, and some aspects I would say it was negative. Uh, some of the things I learned from them is, you know, because they were quick to judge. So by me becoming a teacher, I always, you know, told myself, don't judge. I always get to know the students first, no matter, no matter what their background may be. So in that aspect, that's what I took away from it. But actually, become a teacher, that wasn't too much given. Relating to how um, they related to students, um, I was always like, um, I mentioned my, my favorite teacher in my senior year. She always spoke to us um, with respect and never talked down to us. And so I always carried that on. And so when I talked to my students, I talked to them, um, I think, with a lot of respect. And um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what I. I carried on. As far as um, like content, I think um, my favorite teacher, which was my U U.S. history teacher, um, I learned from him like a passion for teaching um, the subject. So I get really excited sometimes to the point where I tell my students like, you gotta be too uh, too school for cool sometimes, and and really you know have a passion for the things you're interested in. And so I kind of get carried away a little little now and then, but I, that's what I I carry on from. Just being prepared for anything that might occur during the class day or the school day and uh, just try to make the day fun. I student taught with my former eighth grade teacher at Astoria Middle School um, and she really really taught me about classroom management like she she had those kids and she she was a teacher that sat kids in rows and you know but she would tell me how to talk to them like and and that was really important for me because Kids can walk all over if you, if you don't know how to talk to your students, they'll, they'll take advantage. I think the biggest thing she taught me was just be passionate about what you do. Um, be passionate about what you do, and one of the harder things I had to learn even Ms. back Dallas, then was Ms. Dallas, please report to the counseling office. Ms. Dallas, please report to the counseling office. Thank you. You're supposed Thank to be you. that type of stuff, and um, I mean, that, those are the things I took from her, but mainly to have passionate and for what you do and be compassionate towards your students. Uh, other than just uh, be yourself, be calm, and you know, I think uh, that's what I try to do in the class. I, I had a student a while back that told me, you know, Mr. Croft, you're like the most uh, calm teacher on the whole campus. And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, like if somebody has their phone out or something, you know, you'll like go up to them and ask them to put it away or whatever. And they usually do because you're not all freaked out about it. <laughs> and, and I thought, you know, I guess that makes sense. I try to be like uh, down to earth, I guess, with the with the students. And if you if you show them that you care about them, and uh, you're just trying to uh, increase their their education opportunities, I think that they uh, they respond to you better. So I would say that that's uh, uh, teachers who who taught me that. You know how to how to be yourself and how to how to interact with students uh, was probably the biggest motivation. As a TGB teacher, is just seeing some of the kids that go on and they do well in life, they do well in school, and they come back and they see you. You know, and you get to talk to them and you get to see how their life has become and how they've grown so much. And then some of the ones that come back and they want to do the same things that you do, like becoming a teacher, and they say that you had a big influence in their life, even if they don't go do well <clears throat> with college or anything else, just some of the, some of the students, some of the kids that, that change their aspect, that change their view in life, and you know, they turn over a new leaf and they become you know, a, a, a good product of society. Um, actually, it's these guys that are in this class right now. It's my AVID class. Um, I was very fortunate to start with them on their freshman year, and so now they're seniors. So it's been uh, it's been a great four years, and so um, particularly um, the parties that they throw me for my birthday have been you know outstanding. So they always surprise me every year. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, favorite memories. Uh, a lot of my uh, former students, especially my former athletes, come back to visit. Uh, it's always a blessing. It's really nice to have. probably going on the AVID um, trip a few years ago, like the training trip. Uh, I had a lot of fun with some of the staff just getting to know them outside of school. Um, and then in addition to that, I really like 
putting on powder puff every year for our campus. It, it's fun and I think it's kind of making a history. Hmm. I think it's more so just it's the conversations you have in class and times with students, the the personalities you come across, the the funny things the students say sometimes. Um, you know, just that I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but kinda of like a sense of family like within the classroom. I kinda of enjoy that part. Favorite memories, uh, you mean besides graduation? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was back in the day when they actually had graduation down on the football field, too. There wasn't at any uh, giant arena or anything like that. Uh, I would say uh, playing basketball here, I played basketball here, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool to come back to where, you, uh, to where you played and you were a student, and now you're a coach and a teacher. So it's pretty, pretty cool uh, to come back to that. As far as, uh, as, far as other memories, uh, we used to have dances here, like every every Friday there was a dance. Like if there was a football or basketball home game, there was a dance afterwards, like guaranteed for sure. Uh, and that was pretty fun. Uh, you know, like I said, I remember the mall being built. And that was pretty cool because, ooh, you know, we were going to have a mall. Uh, uh, and just, get you know, having the open campus and just getting to leave campus for, for lunch and that kind of thing was pretty cool. Of course, getting back after lunch was always kind of a little bit of a, a challenge, you know. It's a challenge being in the same school because when you've been here for so long, you remember how it used to be and then when things change, sometimes being old, you don't want change. So it's difficult knowing how Trevor Brown used to be when it came to, uh, you know, participation amongst students and, and, and everything else, just the uh, school atmosphere. And, and seeing the way things have gone to where there's not too much student participation, there's not much competition between students and everything else. So it's tough being an alumni and, and seeing how things have changed. Um, I'll be honest, sometimes I think I might be too lenient because I um, identify a lot with the students here since I was a student here myself. Um, however, I think um, I think this is what makes me try to be the, the best teacher I can because I, I feel so close um, to my students and my community. Not a challenge at all. I mean, I went to school here for four years and I feel very comfortable here for the most part. It's not a challenge at all. Um, at first I thought I might be intimidated by former teachers, but none of them are around anymore. There was um, one or two, but they've all retired. Um, Miss Silk was my dance teacher, and Miss Clark taught here, but she was never my teacher. So I don't really have that. Um, I don't have that hanging over my head right now. Here, I know for sure it will. For certain, it was very awkward being back, not as a student and seeing everything the way that it was, and but being here as an employee, as a teacher on the other side of the fence. So it, that was kind of awkward and hard to adapt to at first, but. I knew how to get around. I knew all the ins and outs of the school, so I know it, it kind of helped me out when students say, "Oh, I can't get here, or I couldn't do that," or I know what they're telling. You know, legitimately is the truth and what isn't. Uh, you know, it's it's so different. It really doesn't. Uh, it really doesn't seem. It almost doesn't really even seem like the same place. It's so different. Uh, you know, because the, the, the school has been remodeled a little bit, uh, the classrooms have all been changed. We used to have these classrooms that just had a big curtain in between the rooms. And they like pulled this, this curtain and there, there wasn't a wall. So, so like if, if this class only had like 15 kids in it and the class next to it had 30 kids, they could adjust the curtain so that that room was a little bit bigger and this room was a little bit smaller. Uh, so there were a lot of differences like that. Uh, the gym doesn't even look the same. When I played basketball here, we had a gym that had a rubber floor. You know, we were uh, like a, a pilot school to, to try this uh, big idea they had that gyms will be better somehow if they have rubber floors. Uh, <laughs> so we had a rubber basketball court. So, you know, like I said before, we had the lockers out there and everything. So there's a lot of similarities, but a lot of things are different. Maybe the, the teachers who went to school here like in the 90s and stuff like that, probably a lot more similar to them. 
but for somebody who went to school here in the 70s when the school is only a few years old, there's a lot of differences. My students, I just, it's easy for me because I never forget where I came from. I know what it feels like to, to sit in these seats and look at the teacher and live in the neighborhood so I can relate to them. So I get to know my students on, you know, on their status, on their basis, and I figure out who they are and how they work, and, and I motivate them from there because I can relate to them. I try to teach them skills, um, more like life skills, as far as how to be independent learners and to be uh, responsible for their own learning. Um, some specific things that I do, I would say, just kind of having them reflect on their own progress in class um, to make their own um, goals um, authentic or meaningful for them so that they, they're more invested on actually following through. Students, uh, I'm a pretty engaging guy and I think my appearance by itself is pretty motivating in terms okay. of kids needing to do what they need to do. I scare them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try to interact with them and let them know that I care about them and I care about their grades so that they try to do better. Um, I, like I said, just like what I learned from my, my teacher in high school, just be passionate about what you do and just try to show them that you care about them. I mean, if they people know you care about them, they'll go the extra mile for you and do what you ask of them. Like I said, I think you have to, uh, you have to let them know first that, uh, that you care about them and that you're, you're here for them, and you're a person, they're a person, and uh, we're all just trying to get through this whole educational process. Uh, I, I try to convince them that uh, we want you to succeed. A lot of times, you know, students think that the teachers are against them, and the teachers want them to fail, and they don't want them to pass, and they want them to get in trouble. No, <laughs> I want you to succeed. So uh, I think when I get them to buy into that, they're maybe a little bit more motivated. You know, I had a, a student uh, uh, or a teacher tell me once that a student told her that the biggest thing that they like about me is, is I care about them. So I, I try to show them that, and I, I think that sometimes that uh, gives them a little more motivation. I wish we would have less students. I wish we could have more participation among students when it comes to spirit weeks, when it comes to football, basketball, baseball games. Um, in that aspect, I wish the students would participate. Please report to the SPED office. Um, I would love to see um, our homecoming parades come back because that's one of my, my special memories when, when I attend a school here. We would always have um, the parades right, right off 75th um, and many different flows from the the clubs on campus. So I'd love to see that come back. Um, we used to do these uh, class chants. So like the graduating class of 98, we would have our chants and then the, each of before and after. Um, but I think we're doing an awesome job already in, in upping the, the school spirit here. So I just, you know, like to see that continue. So. Okay. Um, I really feel like the staff and student connectedness could be a lot more um, I wish that more staff would be involved in what's happening on campus. A lot of staff don't go to events outside of the classroom and it would be it would be really great to see other people go to football games or other people go to plays. It seems like it's the same solid 20 or 30 teachers going to everything and there's like 200 of us that could make a difference. Just student morale and just um, overall, I guess you could say, just spirit of having pride in Trevor Brown. I mean, that's just something that I recall in high school and a lot of it. and. Just more activities and things for the students, you know. It just seems like, and I know we try to do that, and it's hard, it's difficult having 3,000 um, students, but just having more events for the, for people, to, our students to want to come to the school and stay after school and do things. So just in that sense, and then also just having pride and just educating themselves, that's the biggest thing. Um, just give their effort that I you know, know they're capable of, and not settle just for being just okay. Well, uh, maybe like I said about the dances and stuff like that. More more activities, I think, for the kids outside of the school day. I know we had a carnival a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was pretty good. They're talking about making that a, a regular thing. Uh, so I would say uh, increase of extracurricular activities, maybe a little increase in school spirit. <coughs> 
would like to see more people get out to the uh, sporting events and things like that.